Good morning, everybody. Um, thank you for joining us this morning. Um, my name is Bernadine McLeod, and I am the Managing Director at MentorWorks. We've got some great news um, for you this morning. We are in our fourth year relationship with CTMA, a very strong industry association that has secured some funding from the province through the program called Career Ready. So what we want to do this morning is answer all the questions that you have, give you a really strong overview of how this program will provide you very strong hiring incentives for your team. So, and the other positive news about the program is that it's dedicated to Ontario, but it also allows us to go retro to April, 2022, or retro eight weeks um, based on when we get engaged with you. So let's look at um, some of the material. If you have any audio issues, please don't hesitate to drop my colleague Matt um, an email, M-A-T-T at mentorworks.ca, and he will troubleshoot with you and make sure that we can get your audio and your slide share working. We are recording today's session, and we will have it posted on the CTMA website as well for you to be able to download in the future. So if you find that some of our information is overwhelming, please don't hesitate to reach out to the CTMA website and you'll be able to see a great recording of today's session. So again, an intro for me, MentorWorks, just so that you're aware is we're in our 14th year and all we do is research and write the top government funding programs. But what happens from time to time is that the business is not always the applicant for the funding program. What can happen is that a very smart industry association can step up and apply for funding, either from the province or the federal government. And that's exactly what CTMA has done here. So then what our role in today's presentation and in our partnership with CTMA is to do the application writing. So CTMA has guidelines and rules and commitments that they made to the province through the program called Career Ready. Those rules have to be monitored and supported. And in order to do that, the applications have to be written and recorded and referenced on file for the province to be able to view and audit. So our role is strictly to do the application writing, to gather the information from you and to support all the documentation so CTMA can then disperse the funding. So think of CTMA as the bank and MentorWorks are um, the customer service agents on the front line helping to um, help you with these transactions and make it as simple as possible. Um, so that's our role in it. And at this point, I'm going to introduce my friend, Robert Cavill, and he'll um, provide you a little bit more background on who he is and his dedication to CTMA. Yes, good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules this morning for joining us. Uh, I know that some people might be familiar with uh, past for Ready programs, and uh, I'm looking forward to showcasing some of the improvements that we have made and also introducing this program to uh, people who have not participated before. Uh, for those of you who I haven't met, again, my name is Robert Cattle and I've been the Executive Director of the Canadian Tooling and Machining Association for the past eight and a half years. I started my apprenticeship as a tool and die maker in 1976 and received my papers in 1980. Throughout my 46-year career in metalworking industry, I've been a precision machinist, a tool and die maker, and a shop owner. As you can imagine, I've witnessed many changes throughout the decades, and I'm still amazed that the tools and the processes involved in just making things. It's my pleasure to be with you this morning, and I look forward to working with our MentorWorks team again. Bernadine? Excellent. Well, um, what we want to share with you over the next few minutes is what can government funding do for you through this program? So um, you really need to view this program as a fifty dollars to $100,000 grant incentive program, depending upon the number of candidates that you have. 
And let's get into those details now so that you can see what the candidate eligibility and how the program will work. But for a pool of funding per company, you could easily be looking at $50,000 of funding. So I think it's a worthwhile conversation for us to have. Yeah, and this, uh, this funding can reach out all through Ontario. And uh, that's what the Canadian Tooling Machine Association is, is very good at doing. Um, just a little bit of background, we were established in 1963 and formed to promote the precision metalworking industries both nationally and internationally. Currently have actually about 180 members now in chapters in Windsor, uh, Western Ontario, uh, Toronto GTA, and actually been expanding into Ottawa and Eastern Ontario as well. So we all know that the majority of training takes place at the workplace. Companies train their, their team members on a daily basis, and this training comes at a cost. You're usually taking time out of your most productive employees to train and mentor new employees. And this loss of productivity does add up. Uh, the simple premise of our program is to provide some compensation to the employer for these costs, and we do this through wage subsidies. Just want to reiterate, there is no cost uh, for the companies to participate. Uh, CTMA and MentorWorks takes care of the application process for you. As Bernadine mentioned, we have contracted MentorWorks, a CTMA member company, to streamline the application process for you. It's pretty simple. Just give them the information they need, fill out some of the forms that our office sends you, and you're away to the races. If you would like MentorWorks to see if there were some federal initiatives that you could maybe work alongside of our program, please reach out to this to them and discuss this with them. And if that is the case, that might come at an additional expense to you for, for, for federal. Yeah, that's correct, Robert. And we call that stacking when we can take a provincial product like this one called Career Ready and stack it with a federal program, then you can actually receive up to $100,000 or 100% of funding um, for those candidates. That's 100% per candidate. So let's just quickly take a minute and read these bullet points. Uh, you can receive 50% of the wages or up to $5,000 in a non-repayable funding placement for placements of 10 to 16 weeks. You can receive consecutive placements, and uh, these will be based on timelines and funding availability with a cap of three placements per candidate. So you have the potential of 50% of wages up to $15,000 for each participant. You can apply for 12 candidates for each program, uh, for each company under this program, and there are no age limits to the candidate. We focus on skills development and we are encouraging new people to get into the manufacturing industry. Um, we, I do want to add that each participant must be paid an hourly rate and at least minimum wage for the duration of the placement. Excellent. So if you do the math, 12 times 15,000, that means that you could become very strong friends. Um, uh, with CTMA with $180,000 of funding. <laughs> Participating companies must also permit monitoring visits during these placements where participants will be trained following a list of industry specific technical outcomes or competencies and they can be tailored to the individual positions that you're bringing forward to this. Now this might be the only downside of the, the, the whole program because uh, you must put up with me coming to your place of, of business for these monitoring visits. All kidding aside, this, this gives both yourself and the participant an opportunity to gauge what you have been teaching and what they have been learning. I find I've been doing this personally for the past few years and by personally visiting the, the people in the program, it does give them an opportunity to show me what they've been learning whether it's producing a new part on a machine, showcasing a new design they've developed, 
or showing me a spreadsheet of a new system that they have engineered themselves. They are all very proud of these accomplishments and it is great to see. It also gives the ministry some data that it needs to ensure that training is indeed taking place. Excellent. We have developed this program with our members in mind. So we're focusing on companies within the precision metalworking sector. I do I want to point out that these placements are not meant for production type jobs, but for position where uh, for positions where training is taking place over the length of the placement, and that we are able to track this progress. Because the funding from this program comes from the provincial government's skilled development fund, businesses that take part in the program must be located in Ontario and have a registered CRA business number. So you can see where we're focusing on, die making, mold making, precision machining. These are where our members focus. So um, this is where we're going with this program. Excellent. So will you support one unit if they were an operator, a new operator on the plant floor, Robert? Because that's a common question we get. Very good question. Caitlin and I do look at each um, application specifically. And what I do is I look and, and I see if there are outcomes that can be developed for one single placement, 10 to 16 weeks. And we gauge each application individually. Excellent. So let's look at the candidate eligibility factors and what are we looking for in this program? So each um, candidate must be a Canadian citizen or have a permanent resident status. The question does come up um, again with international students. If the, if the applicant is in the process of of going through with the permanent residency status and can show that this is taking place, that can be accepted as well. Um, they must be a resident of Ontario. And um, we're really trying to come from these different categories. We're looking for new apprentices. We're looking for high school students and graduates, post-secondary graduates, a post-secondary co-op student, Upskilling an existing employee. This is a big one. Um, Bernadine and I will uh, expand on this a little bit further. If you, if the person has been displaced during the pandemic, um, this is a big deal because over the past two and a half years, maybe there's one silver lining to this whole pandemic mess is because people see that manufacturing, people in manufacturing have continually been working. And, um, you know, people might see, well, wait a minute, this is a really good career opportunity. They never stop working. And people who are job seekers, who are looking to improve what they're doing and, and, uh, and coming to our industries. Excellent. So this is a very common question that we will go through with you as we're gathering the data to complete the application, is we do require the social insurance number for the individual. And if it starts for as n number nine, then that's our indication that they don't have permanent resident status. So then at that point, we will need to ask you to confirm if it's their intention to apply for PR status for us to be able to put that candidate in front of CTMA. So that's an important criteria. We'll see that quite a bit with the co-op students that they may not have PR status. So then we'll work through um, problem solving and troubleshooting that with you. Career Ready with CTMA Expanding Opportunities High School Co-ops. This is something that is entirely new in this program and something the CTMA has been advocating for years. Placement positions with wage incentives for high school co-op positions. Historically, it's been difficult for high school students to find co-op placements with local companies. I don't have time to babysit kids. I have business to run. It's something I've heard time and time again. We all know that it takes time away from productive employees to train new people, and this comes at a cost. Well, why don't we apply the same criteria for wage incentives 
to these high school co-op placements as well. This way, more companies may open their doors for learning opportunities. Students will be paid to learn while earning high school credits, and they're going to gain valuable workplace experience, getting to work on time, all those soft skills. You know, you're, you're, they'll be working alongside of, of seasoned people within the industry on a daily basis. This is something European company, countries have been doing for years, and it's something that the CTMA has been advocating for decades. While working with school boards in our last program, I have learned that there is no simple one schedule that fits all. Semesters can start and end in different times of the year, and co-op placements can vary as well. Some can be five weeks, some can be much longer. We are working with our program partners at OCTI, the Ontario Council for Technology Education, and school boards throughout the province to bring forward this side of the program. Monitoring will take place by the teacher or the co-op coordinator to make sure that training is taking place and that the student is progressing. As I said, uh, this is new to us, and we are hoping that this part of the program will not only start new co-op positions, but will also foster long-term relationships between employers and high school. That is extremely valuable, and I would encourage you as an employer to reach out to your local high school and get involved with their tech programs. Yeah, it's a great point, Robert. If, if you've worked with us on government funding, you understand that the federal government will not give you a dime for high school students. This is the, a, a big um, approach for CTMA to step up, get the leadership, get the support from the provincial government to help you fund high school students. It is truly remarkable. And there's lots of research that states that if we don't get the high school students involved in trade early, then they don't see it as a successful career path. So now we have research and now we have funding money to work with um, the OCTE group in order to ensure that that money is delivered to you. So a really big gain and a really nice plus to see this year through this extension of the program. So let's talk about role eligibility, Robert. Okay, so in sort of our past programs, um, with the career ready and even before that with our introductory program, inter introductory trades training program, CNC machinist level one program, we tended to focus on, soft, uh, on shop floor positions. Um, but we've realized that we must expand the opportunities, hence the name, to include other positions within your workplace. Program managers, uh, designers, uh, accounts payables, any position within your company where your new hire is being trained, that will work within our program and we will work with you to develop those outcomes as long as we can see training being progressed. Um, Bernadine, yeah, you thought you were wanting to say something? No, no. Uh, um, Upskilling up, up candidates, that's a big deal. Um, so. You know, there's an example there, upskilling a general laborer or maybe somebody working in shipping, receiving. Um, maybe they see they, I'd like to become a machinist or a machinist who would like to become a designer or whatever the case may be. If you have somebody that you're upskilling within your organization, they are available to this program. Yeah, I think that's great. Even if they're on the floor in a general labor role and they want to move into the office, maybe quality control or in a junior sales role, now you have the ability to do that. Um, so it, it's great to see how you can develop them and that hopefully they can use whatever their college education is and then um, reevaluate how they can move within your organization. So now there's an opportunity for us to fund that. You've heard us in the past always tell you that if the person's already on payroll, we have nothing for you. However, with upskilling, now we have the capability of sort of saying, 
who are your five to 10 employees that you're developing? Let's get funding for those people. And guys, we don't care anymore if they're 30, 40, or 50. You can still apply for upskilling money. And um, that's really how CTMA has created this program, which I think is a really big gain for your observation. So remember, when we talk about two to three placements, I want you to think about that as units of funding. And one unit is 12 to 16 weeks or 10 to 10 16, 16 weeks. weeks. So if a unit is 10 to 16 weeks, that's how you can string three placements together or three units together for you to maximize your 15K of funding. So I see those questions all the time. What do you mean by placements? It's really units of time that that individual will stay employed at your firm. So let's get into some of the questions that we receive now on the mentor work side. And one of the common questions we get, Robert, is what happens with the CTMA rules and the commitments that you've made to the government? What happens if the candidate leaves? What happens to their funding? Can you summarize that? Yeah, in, in a nutshell, um, if the candidate leaves before the minimum 10 weeks, um, there's really nothing we can do. You will not receive the funding for the time that you've invested in that person. If the candidate was set to work for a longer period, uh, two or three placements, or perhaps a 16-week placement, and they, they leave at an earlier time, every, every um, placement is looked on individually. So we will look at that and we can figure out if we can get some money to you if they leave early within within that time frame. Excellent. And I also want to explain here that if a candidate leaves, you just cannot substitute someone else in that same spot. Um, CTMA has made a commitment to track each person and the application has to clearly state the person's name. So it doesn't mean that we can't um, work with you to receive another round of funding. We just have to start the application process over again and submit the new candidate to CTMA and get you approved for that new um, replacement strategy, if you will, for that individual that may choose to exit or you may choose to exit them. So really important questions. So if we summarize, yeah, um, again, here's the bullet points. You can receive up to $5,000 for 10 to 16 week placement with the potential of three placements. The program will go retroactive to cover candidates. Um, we try to try not to go back more than eight weeks, uh, especially if you can see that if it's a 10 week placement, it's, it's impossible. But uh, we work on everything individually. So bring that forward to Caitlin. Um, we're seeing a very high interest in this program, so uh, don't delay. And um, as we mentioned before, there is the opportunity to stack this provincial program with some federal hiring uh, grants that uh, MentorWorks may be able to help you. Bernadine? Right. Yeah, I'm watching the question dashboards come in, and one of the key questions, Robert, is this. Um, can you define what you mean by tech program at high schools? Oh, that's a good question. Um, years ago, it used to be your machine shop class. And what we're finding is uh, the tech teachers are, are now uh, calling some of their programs engineering programs, even in high school. So um, it's, it's more um, a, a terminology change, uh, the tech programs. We, of course, are are focusing on the machine shop um, classes uh, within your high schools. And uh, just as a little bit of an aside, nothing to do with what we're doing with the placement side, but the CTMA in our previous program and this program are buying millions of dollars worth of equipment and installing them in high schools throughout Ontario. And because we believe that high school students must be exposed to this equipment at a much earlier age. So 
you know, to answer your question directly, it would be more your machine shop um, teacher within within the high school. Excellent. I actually took a, a course. I was on a late, uh, and I remember it very well. I think that was grade 10. And uh, I think we could talk Robert into maybe looking at some of the drafting and design courses that the high school uses as well. Those would be what we would call part of this engineering machine shop approach. So I'm going to speak a couple of minutes about what else can we do on top of CTMA's funding. And this is something that uh, this industry association supports us to do is to teach you and to make sure that you're exposed to federal funding. So the federal government, from the Trudeau's perspective, these programs are always open and they run 12 months a year. And the federal government will give you 50% or up to $5,000 for co-op funding. Most of the streams for the federal government, there'll be 14 or 16 different products in a given 12 month window. Don't worry about trying to sort them out. What is open right now though, are the federal programs that will only recognize official co-op students. So again, the feds do it very different than what the province does, but they'll look at marketing roles, um, software ERP type roles, digital marketing roles, and so will CTMA. So we can now have the ability to stack the two programs together. The only slight difference on the federal side is of course the federal government is very focused now on inclusion and women or any underrepresented groups. So the federal government will give you $7,000 of funding where through the CTMA, Robert was only able to secure $5,000 of funding from the provincial government. So you'll want to stack that and our team will work with you if we see a candidate where we can approach federal funding, we will come to you and say, by the way, there's a federal product that exists. Would you like to engage in our services? And that is the only time you'll see a fee from our team here at MentorWorks is if there is additional funding we can provide you. I see questions come in about what if we're hiring graduates? Um, there is no federal money right now in this manufacturing space for graduates. We had a lot of clean tech money. We had a lot of electric vehicle money. We had um, various streams open for graduates. The only thing that the feds have um, provided existing or a top up of funding for is for co-op students where you're making a commitment to keep them for 10 to 16 weeks and putting them on a T4 salary. The other program that Robert and I are interested in making sure that you know about is training. Because it's one thing to add to your payroll team, but it's another thing to invest in skills development training long term. And Robert and I feel very strongly that it's important that you're always in tune with money and hiring and training incentives and you look at this pot together. So any of your payroll members, you can apply for training money to fund you at 83% of the third party trainer. So it's very significant money. Again, it's provincial program money. So once you've made the commitment to youth and upskilling and getting high school students and apprentices and co-ops and graduates on board. Um, the government also is very strong with saying we, the, the government has um, made money available to ensure that you continue to train them. So you'll see us talk to you about words like training, skills development, knowledge transfer. And um, the government has done a lot of research that started with Toyota that showed the fastest, strongest growing companies are those that invest in training. And therefore, we felt it was appropriate today to teach you and make you aware of this program, Canada Ontario Job Grant, 
where you can receive up to 83% if you are below 100 payroll members and 50% funding for that third party trainer if you're above 100 people on payroll. So some very significant money and you can train on anything. I see the questions coming in already. You can train on automation equipment. You can train on maintenance of your equipment. You can train on supervisory skills. How do you make the youth um, know how to um, interact and communicate better? So there's so many options here on supervisory training, design software training is another very common um, item. Continuous improvement, lean, uh, again, extending the skills of these new employees so that they can make better decision-making decisions for your company is the ultimate goal from the government. So again, um, in closing, let's see how we're doing for time and then I'm going to go to um, the question board and respond to any other questions that have come up. Um, you can definitely go to the ctma.com website and find today's recording, find detailed rules about the program, share it with your HR members on your team, or feel free to email Robert directly, and those are his coordinates in front of you. Uh, Caitlin is my colleague on board. She is going to be your hands-on, your day-to-day -day leader of this program. She coordinates all this activity very, very closely with Robert and his team. So you can feel free to reach out to Caitlin. She will be reviewing your job descriptions, your resumes, your start dates, your salary. Um, salary, really, the only thing we care about is that you're paying minimum $15 an hour. But she's going to collect those four things from you. Um, let me repeat them your resume, your job description, your start date, and your salary. And then from there, she will then work with Robert, complete the forms, and get you officially approved for this program. Now, I see questions coming in about retro. Yes, Robert has given us the flexibility that we can go retro to eight weeks from the start date. So that's when the funding would kick in, is eight weeks previous. So very exciting to know that we can even do a rollback, um, the Walmart rollback, roll back, I'll call it, if you have um, um, started any candidates previously. Robert, anything that you want to add at this point before we open it up for questions? Um, no, I think uh, we've covered uh, most of the criteria and pretty in depth, um, giving you a little bit of background as well. Um, and uh, yeah, fire away if you've got some questions, I'm here. Okay. When it comes to high school students, should they reach out to you to do the match or what do you recommend of how they can find these high school students before um, the school year closes? Because once it hits June 30th, people are a little concerned about the drought, the drought in making the contact with the teacher community. Uh, so is this the company reaching out to yes. the high schools? Yeah, yeah. again, make that relationship, get in touch with your high school. You will find that, you know, working with Octi, we have a, a team there who are looking on the student side, they are looking for companies to, to participate in high school co-ops. So yes, please reach out to your local high school as quickly as possible. And you might even find that some Octi uh, representatives will be getting in touch with you as well. Great, and maybe as a follow-up, we will give you the coordinate information of how you can reach out to Octi. And we'll provide you an email address and a phone number because we certainly recognize that the days are counting. I think the last day of school is June 28th, so you're going to have to act on that pretty quickly in order to make um, uh, that reach out. Uh, and before we leave that, though, there there is, uh, and I'm learning a lot with school boards, but remember, this program ends March 31st, 2023, and between now, which is June, and March, there are several different semesters that are taking place, so, you know, 
just if you miss this June graduation, there are other semesters that we will be targeting throughout the length of this program. Uh, so it's an ongoing thing, Bernadine. It's not all June or nothing. Okay. It's ongoing throughout the year. Okay, great. Because we get that confusion with our members all the time. And by the way, if you're not sure of this acronym um, that we're <laughs> referring to, it is O-C-T-E dot C-A. So it stands for Ontario Council of Technology Education. Okay, so O-C-T-E ca if you go to their website they will be profiling this program an email address for you to use immediately is octe chair at octe.ca so octe and then the word chair no spaces at octe.ca or reach out to your local high school as we suggested when it comes to the other candidates, whether it's graduates, whether it's co-op students, whether, and even if they're not in a formally registered co-op program, it doesn't matter. If they're just returning to college in September, let's get you funding for that individual. So again, um, that's why I use the word intern, because intern means that they're not in a formal co-op program. Then we can fund co-op students, and then we can fund graduates. And I'm being very, very careful not even to use the word young graduates. If they're a graduate from um, a college or a university, and they've been out for three years, five years, 10 years, we can still receive and apply for funding for them according to uh, whatever role you want to put them in in your organization. So that's a key consideration. Now, Robert doesn't have the time to do matchmaking. So everyone says to us in the question panel, how do we find these candidates? Guys, I will say that you can post on Indeed. Um, your high schools will help you, but probably my number one favorite location right now is Indeed. We can post on Indeed and probably get 65 applications within five days. So I'll leave that with you to determine how you want to do your candidate, but that is not covered off in any of the services from Robert or our team here at MentorWorks. I do get some candidates reach out to me uh, over the length of the program, and uh, I do have, I do get some resumes and some contacts. So, um, but again, they're geographical throughout the the province of Ontario. So there might be an opportunity there. Um, right, you can certainly ask and if we can, um, we might have the contacts for you at your local college or university. We're happy to share any resources that you have. So please drop either Robert or Caitlin an email and we'll do our best to help you. I have someone in the London area looking for a position right now. So there oh, you go. <laughs> excellent. Um, I'm seeing some questions on this training program, so I just wanted to go back to the slide very quickly. This does have to be a third-party Canadian vendor, and it is the government's belief that a third-party vendor can train you faster, quicker, better than an in-house person, whether you believe that or accept that or not. Through this program, it is um, an arm's length third-party company that you must be engaging in. So just to appreciate this program, we're looking for a spend of 25,000 to 70,000 with impacts from five to 12 employees. And if you're in that range, then we should definitely have a conversation and explain how this program works. So again, the province is not interested in US training vendors, only Canadian and based on the amount of work of these application forms i would not approach this program if you don't have a spend of at least twenty-five thousand to seventy thousand and then the application approval is about four weeks um, so you can't start your spend for that four week period now a question that i see come in then is how long does it take to get approved robert for your funding <laughs> 
it's a very, very quick process. Uh, it really depends on how quickly you get back in touch with Caitlin. There is a little back and forth. Uh, Caitlin is very, very efficient um, and she's a pleasure to work with. And um, if you can get her the information quickly, she gets the information to me very quickly. And we have had some approvals done in days. And it's 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 a pretty easy process, and we've got it down uh, down pat very well. But there is some onus on you to get back in touch when Caitlin is asking you for information. The quicker you get that information to her, the quicker the approval process takes place. And I will tell you, with Robert's flexibility to go retroactive, um, if you do have to start a candidate, um, we will certainly move your funding back and roll it back for eight weeks so that you won't be out of any money and you'll still receive 50% up to the 5k mark. So that's the importance of um, how these services work through CTMA. Caitlin, I know you're online. Um, is there anything that we're missing? Um, I should say that we've already started this program since April 1, 2022. So we have probably already done about 70 placements. Um, Caitlin has the ability to support 500 placements through the money that CTMA secured. So you can see that we're well underway. How long will this money last? I personally think the money will be gone probably by October. Um, October 1, October 15th. Um, um, I think that would be my prediction. I could be wrong. But Caitlin, anything you want to share at all? Anything that you feel that you still, maybe any common questions that you get that we haven't already covered off? Uh, yeah, I think we've covered a lot of the basics, which is great to hear. I'm definitely seeing lots of interest in the last few weeks. Um, so just as Bernadine said, there are 500 spots and 250 of those are the uh, kind of industry overall ones. So those can be your upskilling, your recent graduates, um, job seekers, um, high school graduates, and then 250 are specifically reserved for those high school co-ops. So that is definitely a great option and something new, as, as mentioned, to check out for this year. Um, so if you have any questions at any time or you want to run anything by me, uh, my details are on the screen right now and you can contact me directly. I'm happy to share a bit more information or take a look at your candidates and I can kind of let you know, even if you send me 10 over that you're not sure about, I'm happy to sort through and let you know which ones uh, look to be a good fit based on timelines and those rules we um, have discussed today. So looking forward to working with everybody. Thanks, Caitlin. Much appreciated. She's our superstar here <laughs> and uh, she'll make uh, this program as simple as we can. Um, notice I'm using the word simple. Sometimes with the government, things aren't easy, but we will certainly simplify the approach. Um, and then in closing, um, other resources from our team here is if you go to our website, mentorworks.ca slash funding, you'll see many other products that are available. Um, our people in our businesses are only as good or as strong as how well your business is being run and operated. So there's lots of money for software, automation equipment, um, there's even programs that will open up very shortly that will respond to in-house training and how you can keep track of all of this is our dynamic funding table on our website. And then finally, we will share funding news with you. This will help you track other industry associations. Um, you'll see when, other, when CTMA receives another round of funding. We really do try to track the latest funding news so that you can keep track of what's going on in the aerospace industry, the automotive industry, the clean tech electric vehicle industry. We will share all of those um, funding news announcements, whether it's from the province or the feds on our website under slash news. And then if you found today's um, session interesting and helpful, please don't hesitate to travel to our event page and um, evaluate other events that we have that will support how you do strong cash flow planning. And in closing, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, Robert and I certainly appreciate how busy all of your schedules are, but um, 
to run a good business, it starts with processes. You have to have great people. And when you do, then you're able to generate some profit. So the three Ps are what we want to leave you with. Uh, Robert, any closing comments? Just thank you very much for taking time out today and uh, look forward to working with MentorWorks and specifically you as well. Uh, get involved in the program. I'm looking forward to coming through your doors and seeing what you're doing. Thank you very much. Okay. Bye for now. Thanks again. And we'll get the recording up on both of our website and the CTMA website very shortly. And Matt, my marketing coordinator, will do a follow-up and he will share some highlights of today's session with you by email for each of you that have joined up and shared your email address with us. But please don't hesitate to join, uh, to share today's link and today's event with other members. We do expect to have another session. It really depends on how quickly these 500 placements go, whether or not another webinar will be arranged in the month of August. So for now, take care, and we look forward to seeing you in the community very soon. Bye for now.